Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will take a look on how our servo motor functions and what it actually does. So if you look on a servo motor from the top, you will see something like this. Basically a housing at a very common type of a servo motor, it's normally blue, and you see a little gear sticking out at the top. So this gear obviously functions as an interface to whatever you want to connect. Normally there is a little plastic piece connected, so you can hook something up like a little wire to steer whatever you want to do or you can obviously put your own specific little adapter on there. So the whole function of the servo motor is basically to move to a specific position. So in this case 45 degrees. And obviously a lot of other motors can also move to a position but a servo motor can do this very precisely as well as actively checking if it actually arrived at this position and correct if necessary. So if you think of a stepper motor for example you can move a certain amount of steps and thereby assume a certain position but you can normally not be sure that you actually hit this position and you're obviously limited to certain increments of 360 degrees limited by the type of stepper motor you have. So the servo motor can move to positions and obviously also can move back to an original position or to any other position no matter from which position you're starting from. Most of the servo motors are very commonly 180 degree motors so you can cover a range of 180 degrees back and forth but you can't do the 360 but there are 360 degree servo motors called so called continuous servo motors those normally tend to be significantly more expensive because beside the actual engine and all the control components also the actual position measuring component needs to be way more advanced than in a simple 180 degree servo motor so moving on to the actual motor itself. So looking on it from a side you will see the housing and then the little knob at the top where you have the gear sticking out. But taking a look on the inside you will find a actually pretty small motor that is producing the rotations and the torque. This little motor can be DC which would be commonly used in all those little servo motors used in automation use cases or in the maker spaces or RC planes or whatever but it could be also an AC motor or whatever other type of motor that really doesn't matter for the servo motor. So the term servo motor refers to the complete setup we will discuss here in a second but not to a specific let's say electrical type of motor. But what makes this a servo motor is basically what happens in between, between the actual motor and the gear sticking out of the top. So if you look inside this, there are actually a bunch of gears, so basically a complete gearbox in there that's basically slowing down the RPMs from the original motor towards the actual gear sticking out of the servo motor. So by doing so, obviously, you will decrease the speed significantly but you will increase the torque significantly as well. Therefore, servo motors can be very powerful, can apply a high torque, while this is also the key to their precision. Because you could have the actual motor running for several rounds before you make a small movement at the top of the gear. So therefore, it's way more controllable. Speaking of the controls, you will also find a little electric controller in there that's hooked up to the actual motor. So this controller is not just turning the motor on and off, but it's also comparing the actual position of the gear sticking out at the top to the desired position and will take action accordingly. So one of the remaining questions is how this little IC knows what is the targeted position. So to communicate to our servo motor, we will normally use a signal, a digital signal, which could be referred to as a PWM signal. So in total, you would have for some very common servo motors, but obviously this can differ based on the type of servo motor you're using and the manufacturer you're using. But the total period of this PWM signal would be 20 milliseconds in quite some cases. But the actual used time here for a 100% signal would be only 2 milliseconds. So speaking of this in terms of PWM, you would see 10% of a duty cycle as the 100% of the actual turning circle. So if you want to aim for this 180 degrees turn, you would have 2 milliseconds a high signal and then 18 milliseconds a low signal. In PWM terms, this would be the 10% duty cycle in terms of having the maximum 100% or maybe the better word is a maximum of the turning 180 degrees. This would be the maximum of a high time. So you would never have a high time 
more than two milliseconds or never a duty cycle higher than 10 percent if you're then aiming for example for example 90 degrees you would therefore only use 50 percent of the two milliseconds so one millisecond high time and 19 milliseconds low time and after the 20 milliseconds in total you would have the next signal with again one millisecond high 19 milliseconds low so you can repeat sending signals to your servo motor and it will automatically then target the position that you submitted via the signal so it will continuously compare the signal that it's receiving versus the actual position and will adjust accordingly so the only remaining question is how does the server motor the little ic in the server motor to be more precise knows what's the actual position of the gear so let's get this aside and take an, again a look on the top onto the server motor because there's one component in there that we haven't talked about so far and that's actually a potentiometer. So those potentiometers look something like this on the picture here, but actually we have a complete video about potentiometers, so make sure to check this out in case that's something new for you. So basically we are stacking one of those potentiometers onto our gear, and then we would measure between two of the connectors of the potentiometer. By doing so, we can map the measured resistance of the potentiometer to the actual position of the gear and thereby feedback the actual position to our IC that then can act accordingly. So for example, right now we are in our neutral position. The servo is referring to as zero degree. So next up, we want to head for the 45 degrees. So we would send in the signal a 0 0.5 millisecond high signal. Immediately the servo will try to match this signal and try to move to the 45 degree precision. In case the servo will overshoot a little bit, which is quite likely, it will immediately realize this because the resistance will not match the signal and will correct by moving a little bit backwards. And he can do this several times until hitting the actual position, depending also on the load that's applied to the servo. So in case you're trying to move something very heavy, you will have a different momentum that then may lead to an overshooting and a correction. So that's basically all you need to know about servers in general. Just make sure to read the data sheet of your servo. Every server is obviously different depending on the type and manufacturer, but that's the main basic principle, how they work in general. It's not necessarily always a potentiometer used for measuring the precision, especially for the continuous servers, for the 360 degree servers, you're way more likely to find an encoder used to find the position, but that's all more high quality stuff or high price stuff. So that always depends on the type you're using. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.